morning and welcome to the LNG Marketplace Weekly News Flash. Here is the latest news we have selected for you from all over the media. We start today with a long-awaited final investment decision. Anadarko Petroleum, recently taken over by Occidental, gave the go-ahead for the construction of the largest single LNG project approved in Africa, located in Mozambique. Once that deal goes ahead, Occidental had agreed to sell African assets to Total. This we read on Reuters. Another interesting deal is reported by Business Wire and Lloyd's List. Commonwealth LNG and Gunver have signed a 15-year LNG offtake agreement. Commonwealth Project is employing a fully modular approach which enables the competitive delivery of LNG. Gunver is one of the world's largest independent commodity trading houses. The trading houses can benefit from the U.S. flexible destination contracts plus lower cost of LNG offtake to buy and sell contracted cargoes on the spot market. Now let's move on to the global LNG trade. While the long-term prognosis for LNG may still be positive, 2019 is proving a tough year as out of the five biggest importers in Asia, only China has seen any growth in demand. It is clear that China's LNG import increase is not enough to offset the loss from the others. This means LNG is increasingly flowing to Europe. For now it appears that Europe's ability to soak up excess LNG is preventing prices from slipping further as stated on Reuters. But who are the main beneficiaries of the growing China's demand? Australia's LNG industry has this year been supplying over 53% of China's LNG imports during the first five months of 2019. Presently, Australia is well ahead of China's traditional suppliers such as Malaysia, Qatar and Indonesia, as well as newer exporter the United States. China also appears to be diversifying gas supply, potentially importing more from Russia and Mozambique. This is all according to U.S. News. As China's imports of American gas have dropped since the import duty was raised, President Trump is seeking a meeting with Chinese counterparts at the upcoming Group of 20 summit in Japan. However, in the case of no deal, it would push China further to buy more gas from other countries, being Russia's Gazprom and Woodside Petroleum in Australia, seen as key beneficiaries, as we read on Hellenic Shipping News. Russia presently is strengthening its natural gas trade with China and also flooding European markets with cheap LNG. It is believed that Russia is intentionally keeping gas prices low to test the response of the global gas market, especially US LNG export elasticity. One of the most current examples of China-Russian strengthened relationship is a shipping joint venture between Chinese Costco shipping and Russian Sovkomflot created to move natural gas from Siberia to Western and Asian markets. The analysts refer to it as Polar Silk Road Venture and call it a game changer, as we read on Finance Yahoo and Nevtegas.ru. As also incremental supplies of US LNG continue filtering into the world market, exporters now face increasingly narrow margin for profit, what has prompted some analysts to predict a looming shut-in of LNG production capacity. While Asia remains a key market for U.S. exporters, the demand in Europe market would determine the extent of any eventual shut-in. This is according to S&P Global Platts. In current market conditions, with growing European demand and liquidity, U.S. and Russia cargoes being increasingly traded, GLX, an online LNG marketplace, has launched LNG trading in Europe. Now LNG buyers, sellers, and traders can access real-time market sentiment when dealing spot cargoes in Europe through new digital bid offer system. Let's see what's happening outside of Asia and European markets. Argentina's rising natural gas output and its geographical advantage should make the South American country an emerging source of gas supply to Asia. Two factors favor the supplier. The peak potential LNG production in Argentina coincide with strong winter demands from utilities in Asia. Also, shipping LNG to Asia from Argentina would be cheaper than from the U.S. Gulf as there would be no need to transit the Panama Canal, as stated on RigZone. The last two pieces of news are from the U.S. Virtual Pipeline delivers its first LNG in the U.S. The Edge Virtual Pipeline, with no fixed infrastructure and no need for pipeline access, enables to deliver LNG to remote locations and to source its gas feedstock from stranded gas sources. The process deploys transportable cryobox LNG units and delivers LNG directly to customers' doorsteps. And last but not least, the Waterway LNG Parity Act was brought before the U.S. Congress. Currently, LNG in the U.S. is taxed at a higher rate per unit. 
This legislation would eliminate the tax advantage for diesel versus LNG. This piece of news we found on NGV Global News. That's it for this week. Tune in next week for more news. And until then, thanks for tuning in.